remember when age ratings meant something? No, 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 I, I don't mean to go all, well, uh, back, back, back in my day. Well, actually, this wasn't back in my day. I was born in the late 90s. I was still a sperm when what I'm talking about transpired. In the 80s, age ratings were completely different than how we know them today. The R rating still has the same meaning it did back then. Oh, if it's R, it's got lots of swearing, gore, sex, all that shit. But what I'm talking about is the PG rating. Today, the PG rating is basically a sign for this will be slightly annoying, but it'll keep your kid quiet for an hour and a half. The most you'll get out of a PG movie today is ha ha ha, fart jokes, so funny, ha ha ha, oh, oh that's, a, that's a real fucking knee slapper right there, I'm killing myself here, I'm killing myself! It's basically what every kid's film these days is now rated. But I think most people seem to forget what PG actually stood for. Parental guidance. As in, be cautious when showing your kid this, because it might have some questionable stuff in it. And the 80s, <laughs> the 80s took full advantage of this. There are a number of films that were made in the 80s and that were rated PG, and they had swearing, smoking, drinking, and tons of crude stuff in it that PG films nowadays wouldn't dare touch with a 20-foot pole. Some even went as far as to have graphic depictions of death in them. You know Poltergeist, that horror movie from the 80s about the haunted house and ghosts and zombies and shit? Guess what? PG. Now, try showing your kid this after cutting on whatever new Minions film is out. I'm sure they'll love it! Probably my favorite example of this is Beetlejuice. For all intents and purposes, they should have re rated this film a long time ago. Because this movie is basically a PG-13 film that slipped through the cracks. The story involves a dark subject matter, death. It has disturbing imagery that would horrify any child. We just have to pray the other closets are bigger than this one. It has drinking, smoking, swearing up the ass. You bunch of losers! You're working with a professional here! Nice fucking model! It even has a whorehouse in it. Yeah. And no, oh, no, no, no. It's not like it's heavily implied what it is. It, they don't allude to it. They flat out call it a whorehouse in the movie. The whorehouse was my idea. Mommy, what's a whorehouse? This movie is the prime example of what I mean. But, you know, Beetlejuice is a dark comedy. Poltergeist is a horror movie. The movie I want to talk about today is clearly made for very small children. Or at least you would think it was made for very small children. Because it's actually absolutely fucking terrifying. Ha <laughs> ha, here's the problem. Too many toasters. You know what they say, all toasters toast toast. No one, no one would expect a film like The Brave Little Toaster to be like it is. Yeah, The Brave Little Toaster. Sounds like a film you would cut on for Timmy after his latest brain dead cocoa mill lobotomy. <laughs> this movie does sound like some generic bargain bin trash you buy for five bucks from your local dollar store. It does sound like that. But in actuality, 
This movie is a timeless classic. It is way better than it has any right to be. There is so much care, thought, and love put into this film, despite how bouncy and innocent looking it is. But it is also a very popular topic online for shit like childhood trauma. Because that is also what this film is known for. This film is fucking terrifying, especially for little kids. I'm not the first one to talk about this movie's horror, and I definitely won't be the last. But it needs to be said again and again. You know that whole spiel I went on about PG ratings a minute ago? Well, actually, that was all completely pointless here, because this film isn't even rated PG. It's G, the lowest possible age rating you can get on a film. So it's even more capable of a false sense of security. From the eyes of a child and an adult, I can attest, holy shit, some of the footage in this film is fucking dark and brutal. I can totally see why this scared the shit out of me as of a child. And I know I'm not the only one. So, let's talk about what the film is about. The story is very simple. A group of appliances are awaiting the return of their master. A kid who used to play with and use them all the time, but are in denial because it's been years since he was last seen. They decide to finally go out and find him themselves. The main cast includes our titular hero, Toaster, basically the leader, Blanky, the child of the group, Lampy, the brains of the group. Radio, the one who never shuts up of the group. Well, well. Look at the city slicker pulling up in his fancy German car. This car was made in Guatemala. Well, pardon us, Mr. Gucci Loafers. I bought these shoes from a hobo. Well, la di da, Mr. Park Avenue Manicure. I'm sorry, I believe in good grooming. And Kirby, the brute strength and grumpy one of the group. All their personalities clash and bounce off each other pretty well, which they should because this is what the film mostly focuses on. It's a typical animated kids film story, and that's what I want to address here first and foremost. The vast majority of this movie, about 90% of it, are typical 80s animated film tropes. You know, hand throw talking animals, big set pieces, it's about what you'd expect. But that's the sense of false security I was talking about. For the vast majority of the movie, any adult walking in on this, they would probably think, oh, this is a fun little cute little movie. But then, the minute they turn their backs on it, it's like the movie becomes self-aware. It's like it goes, are they gone? Are they gone? Okay, good. Here you go, Timmy. Here's the scariest fucking thing you've ever seen in your life. Fuck you, motherfucker! So I told you about the synopsis of the film, but I left out a little detail. The appliances finally get the motivation to go and search for their master after the air conditioner started insulting them and attempting to give them a reality check. The air conditioner, for some reason, is voiced by Phil Hartman, doing a Jack Nicholson impression. Why don't you just shut up? Hey, I'm real scared there, Kirby. What are you gonna do, suck me to death? Okay, weird directing choice, but, but, but it fits. The appliances then just start saying he's jealous because they can move around and he's stuck in the wall. And this causes the air conditioner to get really, really pissed. So, it's back to that stupid static again. You think I don't know what's going on in here? Just because you can move around, you think you're better than I am. I'm not an invalid. I was designed to stick in a wall. I like being stuck in this stupid wall. I can't help it if the kid was too short to reach my dial. So, uh, yeah, the opening of this movie is mostly all the apostles doing little cute dances. Oh, it's so cute. And then, oh, this one just killed himself. Don't mind him. He, he, he's just a little quirky. So after that, a good chunk of this movie is basically a road trip movie. The Aplantis are just going on their way to find their master, running into different things along the way. They run to a bunch of animals and plants and stuff. There's a cute little animated sequence right here. And, and they move on. This is the part when the parents walk in and see all the cute bouncy shit and assume this is what the entire movie is about. They could not be more wrong. Eventually, the appliances run into a dark forest. There's some spooky tree imagery here, a few character moments here and there, but it's nothing to note. Then, they all eventually fall asleep, and the toaster has a dream. 
or as I should say, a nightmare. Toaster has a nightmare of malfunctioning and hurting his master. And then, this happens. Okay, first, that clown design. Do I even need to say anything? Look at it! That could pass as a horror movie villain! Second, why is it a clown in the first place? They had no reason to make it a clown, but they did anyway. And I know this is a nightmare sequence. It's supposed to be creepy, and a lot of people find clowns creepy. But Jesus Christ, they went overboard here! If any kids watching this weren't afraid of clowns before watching it, they will be after watching this. Third, this entire nightmare sequence is completely irrelevant to the plot. It has no bearing on anything. So this was legit put here just to scare the shit out of any kids watching and nothing else. Chad move, I must say. This damn clown has been burned into my memory for over 20 years, and I still haven't forgotten it. Not to mention all the scenery, like getting attacked by forks and the toaster falling into a bathtub. Jesus, 80s kids movies didn't fuck around. Eventually, Toaster wakes up, and there's a big storm going on. Shit gets messed up, and the characters get scattered, but they all eventually get back together. Now, I want to say, I know it seems I'm kind of rushing through this, but I don't want to show everything in the entire movie, you know? There's some genuine, heartwarming moments between the characters you can experience for yourself. Like, here's this scene, for example. Kirby eventually gets fed up with hauling them around everywhere, and says he'd be better off without all of them. A few minutes later, everyone but Kirby falls into the waterfall, and Kirby is left all alone. There's this long shot of him just sitting there, sad and alone. And then he jumps in after them. Now that's a genuine moment, showing he does care about them in the end, even if he is just a cranky old vacuum at the end of the day. I don't want to spoil all these actual moments. I'm here to make you have PTSD, dammit, not be charmed. So they make it through the woods, but then they nearly get devoured by some quicksand. All seems lost until they get rescued by... Oh, it's me when I hit 30. They then get taken back to his shop, and they find out they're in a scrap metal shop. They're probably going to get gutted for parts. There's some more dark imagery here, and even a song shot like a horror movie to show you how screwed they are. But then, after all that, they then hatch a plan to escape, and they do so by... <laughs> well, well, that was unnecessarily freaky. So the appliances escape and head into the city, and eventually find where their master lives. I, 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 I gotta stop for a second. This scene always bothered me, even as a kid, because this city is gigantic. And you never see any people in it. You mean to tell me no one saw these walking, talking abominations of God while they were in the city? You, you know what, whatever, I'm over it. They go to his place of residence, blissfully unaware that he left earlier to try and retrieve them from the old cottage they were in. Now that is irony! They then get kicked out by his newer gel appliances, and they get sent to the junkyard. The junkyard is where the finale of this movie takes place, and it's a dark, gloomy, and depressing place. In contrast to the cute, colorful, vibrant first part of the movie, this place is dirty, filthy, and dangerous. This place is also home to, by far, the most well-known part of the movie, the musical number sung by the cars in the junkyard. This kind of pressure I must confess one more dusty road would be just a road too long now I will say this finale isn't like pants feelingly terrifying like the clown was 
but your eyes start to slowly bug out of your skull once you listen to the lyrics of the song and realize what's happening here. I was in the Indy 500. I must confess I'm impressed how I did it. I wonder how close that I came. Now I get a sinking sensation. I was the top of the line, out of sight, out of mind, so much for fortune and fame. All of these cars are being sent to their deaths. They're confessing their reasons as to why, knowing they're about to die. A G-rated kids film about a cute little toaster on a fun adventure ends with a bunch of cars confessing their sins before being, well, basically executed. And hell, the last car in the song willingly drives onto the conveyor belt, realizing how worthless he is and actively chooses to die. Once in an Indian nation, I took the kids on the skids with the hope he was happy to lie and say, You're worthless. God, I wish I were that car. Now, if you ask me, I'm usually one to find this sort of analysis of movie and kids films kind of cringy. Oh, the dark truth or the dark secret about this and that. But here, it's very, very blatant what they're doing here. A kid will not pick up on this. They're just going to notice the catchy song. But adults sure as hell would, especially when listening to the lyrics. It feels like this was purposely made to be looked at again as an adult and realizing this is all sorts of fucked up. Eventually, their master finds his way to the junkyard and discovers his missing appliances and is ready to take them back home. However, the magnet ain't having it. That damn magnet is determined to have them crushed. Even if it includes him. Holy shit, this man is about to get pulped into a smoothie fitting for Wings of Redemption. I just can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. This is extremely tense for a film rated G. Hell, I've seen PG-13 films with less tense climaxes than this. The toaster then decides to sacrifice himself in order to save his master and his friends. Movie makes you think he's gone forever, but of course his master takes him back home, fixes him up, and they go on their way to live their lives with their master. Which would result in two direct-to-DVD movies no one will watch or care about because they could not match up with this one in any fashion. So that was The Brave Little Toaster. A movie that is stuck in the minds of many kids who grew up with it because, well, it seems so innocent and cute looking, and then when you least expect it, would scare the absolute shit out of you with dark imagery and themes. That's the reason I made this video. This movie just popped in my mind one day, and I remember how much it made me piss myself, and I wanted to talk about it. Because of this movie's random jumps into dark moments, it's what makes it stick out. This isn't some bouncy schlock to keep your kids quiet. Well, actually, some scenes are exactly that, but it'll still put some hair on your kids' chest if they're able to stick through the dark stuff. This movie is actually perfect for that. If you want to introduce your kids to something a bit more intense than just BANANA <laughs> XD, this movie is primo material. It is a cult classic through and through that people still love and watch to this day. It's not just the dark moments. There are a lot of character moments and heartwarming moments that show you it can be harsh, but still kind at the same time. Like the world itself. And again, it's also a time capsule of a bygone era of movie ratings. Remember, this was rated G. The lowest age rating possible. Now this is just me, but I think some current year anime films could do with some harsher themes like this movie has. Instead of just schlock to keep your kid quiet for an hour and a half, Put something in there that'll be unexpected and terrifying to them, and show them they can get through it, just like the brave little toaster himself. That's what this movie is all about. You know what they say, 
All toasters toast toast. No, they do not! They toast bread, dumbass! Also, who says that? That's not a saying, that's an actual fact! That's like saying, oh, you know what they say, fire burns? Of course fire f***ing burns! And you just carry that bread with you? It has your literal enemy on it! Why would you buy his product? Why the f*** would toast pop out when you unplug the toast?